Good evening, friends. This is Francis Langford bringing you a part of the American theme, Maxwell House Coffee Time. May we come in? It's Maxwell House Coffee Time, brought to you each week by Maxwell House, the coffee that's bought and enjoyed by more people than any other brand of coffee in the world at any price. So have another cup of coffee and listen to 30 minutes of words and music and reminiscence. Today we bring you songs written especially for Hollywood pictures. The voice of Eloise, the Maxwell House Orchestra and Choir under the baton of Carmen Dragon. This is Toby Reed and here is your hostess, Frances Langford. <laughs> Let me see, that song came from the picture Broadway Melody of 1929, didn't it? Yes, it did. Well, speaking of the screen... We weren't. We're supposed to. Who says so? Maxwell House. Oh, well, in that case, all right. We're supposed to be doing a whole program of songs written especially for Hollywood pictures. So I'm delighted to see that you've chosen another song for picture of 1929. Yes, and I'm sure that a good many people count among their treasured memories Charlie Farrell and Janet Gaynor in Sunny Side Up and this coming song. I'm a dreamer You know, one set of instruments you could spotlight right about here would be the violin. But to bring out the full beauty of this lovely melody, it takes not only the strings, but the woodwind, the brasses, and the rhythm section, too. And when all these instruments are skillfully blended, we enjoy a completely harmonious result no single instrument could achieve. Now, just as a talented conductor selects different instruments for different qualities and blends them perfectly for our musical enjoyment, so it is with the gifted craftsmen who create Maxwell House Coffee. Not one, but many superb coffees go into the same Maxwell House blend, each carefully chosen for its own very special flavor qualities. Our Maxwell House experts choose Manizales for mellowness. They blend in Medellin for richness. They add other choice coffees for robust vigor. Booker Among Us for fine, full body. And the result? 
coffee at its flavor peak, a blend so wonderfully satisfying, it's bought and enjoyed by more people than any other brand of coffee in the world. So friends, why not enjoy the very real pleasure of really great coffee? You can for just a fraction of a penny more per cup than the cheapest coffee sold. Just get Maxwell House, always good to the last drop. He's ideal, but then he isn't real, and I'm a You've heard two songs from old pictures. Now, here's the title song written especially for a brand new picture. It was written by Carmen Dragon and Jack Brooks, and here it is, The Time of Your Life. Time on parade Makes it hum like the drum and the pipe I guess Hollywood plays a pretty big part in the American scene at that, Francis. And a mighty important part of Hollywood is the Walt Disney Studios and the colorful cut-ups of the wonderful Disney characters. Well, they've had quite a few song hits come out of that studio, too, haven't they, Francis? Yes, indeed. And the one I'd like to do right now is from the Three Caballeros, and it's not the least of them. Remember? <laughs> Still play 
seen is many different things. It's circuses and ice cream socials and movies. And it's the family celebrations and the disturbances. As a matter of fact, this vacation time of the year, it could be almost anything. Hello? Hello, Francis. This is your father, Francis. I'm sorry to bother you at work, but I'm awfully sick, Francis. Could you possibly come home? Well, sure, if it's necessary. I had a date with some of the girls to go out tonight. Do you think I'd better break it? No, go ahead. I can always die alone. <laughs> I'll break it, Pop. You get into bed and I'll be right home. You feel a little sorry for yourself. You think, here it is my birthday and no one's even said happy birthday. And I was going out and now I can't. And you think, everything happens to me and it usually stinks. <laughs> so you go home. What's the matter, Pop? My stomach's having a fight with the rest of me. My throat hurts, my head aches, my back aches. The first thing you do is pop a thermometer in his mouth. What's my temperature? 99. No! 99 is nothing, Pop. You think to yourself, men are such babies. Every time they get a little ache or pain or sniffle, they have to make a big production of it. Maybe I'm having appendicitis, too. My stomach hurts. Anyone's stomach would hurt who had just eaten a whole watermelon. <laughs> How did you know about that? I viewed the remains. You, you think to yourself, what has happened to the old-fashioned woman? Here you lie, unable to lift your head to defend yourself, and she throws a watermelon in your face. You think to yourself, was it for this that I colicked her, whooped her, chicken poxed her, changed her? Here, let me see your throat. Open your mouth and say, ah. I won't do it. A man's entitled to some privacy. <laughs> Come on, say, ah. Ah. Mm-hmm. All right, I'll swab it for you. Now, hold still. No, swab it. What do you have in mind? Climbing down with a bucket and a mop? Ma, <laughs> uh, please, I can't do anything to help you if you want to cooperate. Now, please, say, ah. Ah. Uh, there. What are you trying to do? Swab my stomach? <laughs> well, you want to get well, don't you? Not that badly, no. I called Dr. Collier, and he said you're to have a large glass of fruit juice every hour. I hate fruit juice. I hate oranges, lemons, and grapefruit with their disgustingly fat faces. Well, you just have to hold your nose and drink it. You think to yourself, it's got so a man can't even enjoy being sick anymore. All people want to do for him is to get him well. Hi, Pop. Hello, Holly. Permit me to introduce your sister, the poor man's Florence Nightingale. Permit me to introduce your father, the poor man's hypochondriac. You still ulcerating, Pop? What'd she say, Francis? She wants to know how you feel. Oh, that's very kind of her. Holly, your poor father is not very well. You look to me like you're going to kick the bucket any minute. I haven't got the strength, daughter. <laughs> Go squeeze Pop a glass of grapefruit juice, Holly. Oh, grapefruit juice stinks. Holly, you're not to use that word. You stand up for your rights, Holly. It does stink. <laughs> you think you're going to check out, Pop? Check out? Yeah, across the Great Divide. Cash in your chips. Get measured for a pair of horns and a tail. Holly. <laughs> should I be mad again, Francis? You certainly should. Holly, you can't talk to your father like that. <laughs> I'm sorry, Pop. I wouldn't dream of upsetting a man so close to his last licks. Holly, you simply have to talk English. She means so close to death's door. Do I look that ill to you, Holly? Well, you don't look good. You sink back on your pillows and you break out in a cold sweat. You try to say something and your voice catches in your throat. <laughs> you think, there it is. There's the death rattle. <laughs> what did you say, Pop? Is there time to get your mother here? Pop, for heaven's sake, there's nothing wrong with you except too much watermelon. He does sound a little seedy, though, doesn't he? <laughs> Holly, how dare you talk to your father like that? Pop, why are you yelling at that helpless little girl? All she said was that you sounded like you had a cold. Well, how am I supposed to know when I'm being insulted and when I'm not? A square never knows. That's why he's a square. <laughs> Holly, why don't you go someplace and have a cold? No, thanks. I've had one. Go on, Holly. Fix the grapefruit juice. Okay. Oh, hello, Carmen. Hello, ankle socks. Hello, Mr. Hogue. How do you feel? Like he's not long for this world. What's his temperature? 99. Oh, uh, I took care of that little item we discussed, Mr. Hogue. Yeah. Uh, tell him my temperature again, Francis. I don't think he heard you. 99. That high? My goodness. You can say that again. That high? My goodness. <laughs> There, Francis. You see, I told you I was sick. Say, uh, you want to hear about the cold I had last winter? No, I don't. Well, I've been working late, and it was raining. I got pretty soaked walking Hi, home. Hi, everybody. I took care of everything, Mr. Hogue. Thank you. Say, what is this I took care of everything routine? Oh, it's nothing. I'm all set, too. 
You mean you took care of something? Why not? I'm somebody, too. Well, of course, there are two schools of thought on that, yours and mine. You know, you bear a remarkable resemblance to a toad I once caught. I had warts for weeks. Where? There. <laughs> you know what I say to people like you? I say, stay away from Francis. You know what I say to people like you? What? Drop dead. <laughs> be almost worth it not to have to bump into you. You stand there watching the two of them fight over you, and you think, this is living. And you're sorry when they stop. You know, when I had my cold last winter, my temperature went up to 101. Mine went to 101 and one-tenth. <laughs> I took penicillin. I took penicillin and sulfur. I took castor oil. <laughs> I was confined to bed. <laughs> among yourselves. I'm going down to see what sister's doing to that grapefruit juice. <laughs> she doesn't suspect a thing, fellas. I sure had to think twice to figure out how to get her home tonight. Have you really got a cold? I felt swell when I went to bed, but the minute I heard what my temperature was, I began to get sick. Well, look, how are we working this? You know, I told everyone to come about eight. Well, when you ring the doorbell, Francis will have to answer it. Then everyone rushes in yelling, Happy birthday! And Holly will carry in the lighted cake. What a surprise for Francis! You go into your room. You put on an old pair of dungarees, and you pull your hair up out of your way, and you feel as cool as a picked chicken, and just about as glamorous. You're on the jump for the rest of the afternoon. Oh, Francis, may I have a glass of ice water, please? Right away, Pop. Oh, Francis, it's time for my fruit juice. Yes, Pop. Oh, Francis, would you mind bringing me the evening paper? Okay, Pop. You take him the paper and you stick the thermometer in his mouth. What is it? Normal. Oh, it couldn't be. That thermometer's lying. Why, I'm burning up. So am I. Well, where are you going? To lie down. Well, aren't you going to put on a, a dress and get fixed up a little? To lie down? Well, no, but someone might drop in or, or something. Not a chance. You go downstairs. Even Holly's disappeared, so you flop down on the couch. You're just about asleep when... Now, who on earth is that? Surprise! Surprise! Oh, my Happy goodness! Birthday. Look how I look. I'll never forgive you for this. It was so wonderful of you. Watch out. I'm coming. Holy oh. smoke. Look at that cake. Oh, Holly. Oh, don't let anyone look at me. I might drop it. Here, Francis, let me put it on the table. It's beautiful. Holly and I went for it this morning. Pop, you old phony, you sick at all. I am now. <laughs> Please, I'm supposed to make a speech. Francis, on behalf of you and yours, may I take this opportunity of wishing you a most happy and prosperous birthday. Thank you, Holly. You stand there cutting your cake, and your thoughts go back to your parents and your grandparents and your great-grandparents and the cakes they cut to mark the passing years. And you think... Here's one of the great traditions of the American scene. In the old times, in the new, in the bad times, in the good, the birthday wishes have been blown across the flickering candles that always wink back like a promise before they go out. And you think, in this traditional manner, a new year starts for me, and here about me are lovely things, life and warmth and symbolism, and my friends to wish me a good year ahead. Happy birthday, dear Birthdays and birthday parties. Yes, Francis, they sure are a happy and a familiar part of the American scene. Well, you could say the same thing about Maxwell House, couldn't you, Toby? I could, Francis. I guess I will. After all, like birthday parties and birthday fun, Maxwell House belongs to the American scene, too. We Americans love coffee. It's our national drink. And remember this fact. Today, with over a thousand coffee brands to choose from, more people buy and enjoy Maxwell House than any other brand of coffee at any price. Now, flavor explains this popularity story, that good-to-the-last-drop Maxwell House flavor that results from the skillful blending of superb Latin American coffees, radiant roasted to perfection itself. Flavor and value, too. For with all this extra flavor, Maxwell House costs but a fraction of a penny more per cup than the cheapest coffee sold. You know, right now is the right time for lots of iced coffee. Icing is a real test of coffee flavor, and the Maxwell House flavor really stands up. Gives you a sometime treat that's simply delicious. But hot or iced, be sure you get Maxwell House, the coffee that's always good to the last drop. Hooray for Hollywood! 
you're terrific if you're even good. But if you think that you can be an actor, the Mr. Factor, he make a monkey look good. Go out and try your luck, you might be Donald Duck. Hooray for Hollywood! Yes, hooray for Hollywood, for Hollywood has given us many of our most beautiful tunes. And here's one written especially for Francis Langford in her first picture, Every Night at Eight. I'm in the mood for love Simply because you're near me Funny, but when you're near me I'm in the mood for love Heaven is in your eyes Bright as the stars we're under Oh, is it any wonder On the mood for love Why stop to think of weather This little dream might say we put our hearts together now we are one I'm not afraid if there's a cloud of love if it should rain
went to find a jolly hour on the trolley and lost her bargain there. With his bright brown derby and his bright green tie, he was quite the handsomest of men. She started to yen, so she counted to ten, then she counted to ten again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Clang, clang, clang went the trolley. Ding, ding, ding went the bell. return with some of your favorite songs and other vistas of the American scene and of course some words and music about Maxwell House. Join us then and make your enjoyment doubly complete by listening over your cups of Maxwell House. Always good to the last drop. And now until next Thursday, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, America's number one preferred brand of coffee. Always good to the last drop. And now stay tuned in for Craft Music Hall, which follows immediately over most of these stations. Just a taste of yellow pudding and believe me, you will know. There's flavor that's best by your own taste test in jello chocolate, butterscotch, and vanilla pudding. Just try them. All three jello puddings are cram full of real homemade goodness. Mellow and satin smooth. Honestly, you never tasted anything better. And jello puddings are nourishing, made with milk. They cook in about five minutes. That's jello chocolate, butterscotch, and vanilla pudding at your grocer's right now. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.